welcome back to sustainable innovation youtube channel where we are talking about sustainable energy sustainable farming practices and water conservation I'm going to introduce you to our topic of this session, which is going to be on poultry farming. We've taken our time to visit our sister, who is really working hard to fight climate change and increase her household income, our sister Jennifer. Jennifer has a farm in Homer Bay County, Rachuanyo North Sub County, in Kibiri Ward. Jennifer, please, can you be able to take us through your farm so that we can be able to learn something. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. And we are going to see something on your farm mm -hmm. as we learn very simple innovations to fight climate change. Okay, my name is Jennifer Tieno. Welcome to my farm. My farm is situated in Omabe County, um, Kibiri Ward, next to our Alaro Center. Uh, here in my farm, I do poultry farming and uh, we usually do corolla breed and um, rainbow rooster and uh, and can and can grow. So apart from poultry farming, I also do fish farming. So welcome to. So this is the entrance. But before you get into the farm, I've put a, a foot bath where everybody, before getting into the farm, they have to dip in their legs. This foot bath contains uh, disinfectant. I normally use a uh, carol, but if you don't have carol, you can also use a uh, biosafe. The importance of doing this is because of biosecurity to prevent entrance of par parasites that cause diseases to the farm, especially the Newcastle disease. When you are in a, when you, you, when you happen to pass by where there's a Newcastle infection and you get into the farm, you can easily transmit it to the farm, in the, to the poultry in the farm where you are going. So it's important to dip your, your, your shoes into the foot bath. Then, uh, this is the gate to my farm. It's important you have a gate to prevent other, other maybe stray chicken, other people want to access, they have to ask for permission before they get into the farm. So, so these are the structures. Mm -hmm. Yep, this farm shelf, the second one, and the next one, the other side. So while doing construction for the housing, then uh, it has to be big enough. It has to be big enough, enough to take care of the number of birds that you want. Then uh, you have to do the lower part should be around one one and a half meter of a solid material. You can use uh, iron sheet or you can use a solid wall if you can afford bricks. But then after this place you have to put, you have to leave it free, as in you have, but you have to put the wire mesh, the wire mesh or, and the wild mesh. This is to prevent predators from accessing the house. The reason why we leave this part is for, it has to be on both sides for cross flow of air because birds need a lot of that fresh air to prevent accumulation of bad, mo bad moisture as in when they defecate and uh, it gets wet and there's no flow of air then they can easily contract diseases and that will make the farmer spend a lot on medication so when you do this there will be cross flow <coughs> the birds dropping contain a lot of ammonia so when there's that cross flow then the ammonia is blown out of the house and the fresh air is in the house so when they breathe the fresh air they remain healthy then of course the upper part should also remain solid and the roofing to prevent them from uh, adverse effects of the sun and, uh, and the rain. Again also you should have a, a lockable door just to prevent predators from coming in and uh, human beings and uh, even other stray birds. Since because you know when you're doing poultry farming it's for your profit making so if you have other stray birds coming and eating your, your chicken feed those are, will be part of the losses. So it would be good to just have a lockable door. So, so 
So inside the house now, you have to put the beddings so that when they when they when they, when the chicken defecates, they absorb the they absorb the moisture the moisture on the droppings so that the birds stay on a on a dry and again, these ones are the patches. The birds use them for patching, especially at night when they are sleeping. They like patching so that they are they are comfortable, so that they don't they don't sleep. And uh, now, because these ones are are layers, now that these these are parent stock for this farm, so here we have to construct where they where they, where they lay. You have to put the sawdust so that when they when the hen lays, it doesn't drop on the hard part so that it's soft, so that the, the eggs don't break, so that when you take them to the incubator, they are not they are not cracked. Another thing is also the feeders. The feeders you also have to hang them. They should not be on the on the ground. And when hanging them, it sh they should be at the the same height as the back of the hen, so that they don't waste the, the feed. So these ones are uh, they are available in the market at the Joakandi areas, but for the drinkers, these ones are improvised. They are for the birds. Just take to the local uh, kibuyu, and then you cut both sides, and then you can just use it for water, watering, the, watering the birds. Another important part is the, is the, is the curtain. The curtain uh, is important when it is raining. You just drop the curtain so that the rain does not get inside the chicken house or uh, when it is windy the, the chicken do not get a lot of cold so this one during the day it's folded up but in the evening or when it's raining it's just dropped down to prevent the to protect the birds from either rain or wind, strong wind so in in the farm we have various stages of chicken we have a uh, one week old, we have two weeks, we have uh, five weeks, and then we have uh, three months and four months, and then we have the parent stock. Mm -hmm. So the parent stock lay the eggs, they, in the parent stock they are both cocks and hens, so that we ensure that the ratio, the ratio in, the, in the mother stock is uh, one, one to ten, one cock, ten, ten hens, that is to uh, uh, ensure uh, proper fertilization of the eggs. So from there I get the fertilized eggs and then um, incubate them and from there I get the day of chicks. So in my farm currently we have one week uh, that is that is being brooded and uh, we sell them at different stages depending on what the, the farmers around and my clients want. The reason I chose poultry, one, let me, stay, let me say it's the passion I have for poultry farming. Because no poultry farming has a lot of challenges and if you don't have that passion, you start with the first time, you meet the challenge and then you, you stop. And again poultry farming, it's easier to it's easier to also maintain. It's just as long as you ensure this cleanliness. For the day for the day old you just brood, you give them feed and uh, the drinking water and the birds just grow. And again also the market that was available, you know people are eating Kenya. The population is growing every day and you know chicken is something that people love eating especially during vacations so it's just to ensure that food is available for the growing population when the poultry waste i use them in my chamber i also have a farm on the other side where we do various various types of farming we grow maize during other after harvesting maize we do other crops like but majorly we use them in the farm and um, some of them also as you may see later on I use the chicken waste for, for feeding the, the black soldier fly which is something that we are just starting for them we don't use the feeds the, the chicken dropping so for her cost benefit analysis what she does most is to make sure that she does not waste anything she's using chicken feeds to feed the black soldier flies which in turn increase 
income to her family and at the same time provide feeds to her poultry. The cycle is the, the system is cycling and there's no wasting. That is why there's zero waste in this farm. Everything is being used. Organic matter is used in the farm, organic and then chicken waste is used to feed the black soldiers. So for when you're brooding the day on, you have to prepare a brooder. A Buddha is a place where you keep they will, and when you prepare for them the heat. You know when the when you get day olds from the incubator, you don't have them. In other areas, in other situations where the hen, the local Kenyan ones, where you give the the mother hen sit on the eggs, then the eggs hatch, then it's up to the mother hen to cover the chicks and give them warm. For the brooder, is where now we provide the warm. There are other means of providing warmth. Others use the g You can get them from the market, the one that has the, the metallic cover that distributes the heat. Some use, uh, like in my family, I use the just brooder. It's, it's economical when you brood many birds. Of course, the unit cost per bird will go down. I know some people might fear it because of the cost. But the reason why I use it is because once you switch it on, the heat is there to you don't have to wake up in the night to go check whether the jackal is all burnt, the birds are now feeling cold, then you have to start lighting the jiko again and start afresh. So it's it's easy to use. It saves time. So in the brooder, it's constructed with the plywood. You ensure that all the corners, you don't have corners. It has to be something circular so that the birds don't pile in a corner when there's cold or when there's too much heat. So they don't they don't um, die because of stampede when they hardly in a corner. So it has to be the corners have to be small, something like a circular, just as I said before. Then in the brooder, you have to keep the sawdust. The sawdust must be saved. You must receive it to remove the smaller particles, because some of them will enter into the the eyes, and uh, when they inhale it, they will have some. Uh, respiratory problems. So ensure that all the the the, the sawdust is, is properly sealed. Then that's what you use on the as a bedding for the small chicks. And then uh, you have to have the feeders and uh, the drinkers. So in the brooding you have to well you are brooding they all the drink the drinking water you must put the chick starch and uh, also put the liquid paraffin. The liquid paraffin and uh, help the the baby chicks in digestion and um, chick start also give them that um, proper start. They it gives them the energy they need and then also you have to provide clean feeds. Normally baby chicks are given chick mash for feeding. The breeding process takes from one day old to three to four weeks. Once the baby hen when once the chicks grow enough feathers to cover themselves from 